Hey everyone, I'm Trevor and today we are at Disney California Adventure to give you a July crowd update. How busy is the park? Let's find out. Let's start the DCA update out here in the Esplanade for once. It is about 12.20 in the afternoon, 12.20. And we are quickly approaching the entrance to Disney California Adventure. Not too bad of a line. Sometimes, I mean, you never know. Sometimes in the afternoon, the line's all the way out to here. Other times, it's just a walk-in. And right now, today, it is Saturday, July 13th. And pretty much walk right into the park. And we are in quick and painless. Now we need to figure out where we're going first today. Well, eeny, meeny, miny, Monsters Inc. Let's head down Sunset Boulevard. I can tell you just from looking at the walkways over here, DCA seems less crowded than Disneyland. I just got done filming the Disneyland crowd update that we had published a little earlier on, probably in a previous week. I don't exactly know what days these videos are coming out on the channel. Reminder, I do film multiple videos per visit. So uh, we just finished the Disneyland crowd update. Hello there. Now we are providing an update here at DCA. So we're able to compare them. And yeah, it definitely looks emptier. Uh, Mickey's Philharmonic Magic never has a line. I, I, it's like, I don't know why I I'd never have to really even mention it. You can always get in in the next showing all the time. Oh, this is for the construction update later, but I'm just gonna mention it now while I'm thinking about it. Beginning on August 5th, the animation building is going down. They are closing it. Everything inside of it will be closed for refurb. How long, nobody knows yet. That's why I usually don't talk about construction updates. People have been asking me about Space Mountain too, but I don't usually talk about construction update things until when I put the construction update together because the fact of the matter is we just don't know a whole lot of information yet. We, you know, it only just appeared on the calendar like a week or two ago. So we need another a week or two um, to let it sit and see if a reopening date appears on the calendar. If not, we'll have to do some super sleuthing from people who have more inside connections than I do to figure that information out for you. But I'll share it with you in the construction update which will be out at the end of the month. Uh, probably around the 30th or 31st is when the construction update will land on the channel for August. Monsters, Inc. Mike and Sully to the Rescue currently posted at a 30 minute wait. As a reminder, if you wanna use the Buddy Pass system, you just come up here to the blue tent and ask the cast member for a Buddy Pass. They'll give you a Buddy Pass, which is basically single rider, but for two people. And you go in the exit here and you'll be able to sometimes walk straight on the attraction. If there is a line for the Buddy Pass, the people will be queued up right here, waiting to go inside the exit here. Uh, considering there is absolutely nobody back here, my guess is that the Buddy Pass is probably a walk-on right now. Nothing beats passing like 45 to 50 minutes worth of standby line, and all you waited was two minutes because you grabbed the Buddy Pass. It means if you have a family of four like mine, you are gonna be split up. Not all four of you get to ride together, but you can ride two and two, no problem. One of you all shared a comment recently about your experience with the Buddy Pass. You had watched my videos, heard about the Buddy Pass, told your family, hey, let's go Buddy Pass this, and they all thought you were crazy talking about something that didn't exist. And then you showed them that you can't get a Buddy Pass, and then you told me you walked right on the attraction, and that's what I love to hear. I love to hear that my videos and my advice are helping you all have awesome videos. Vacations. It's Mrs. Incredible. She's over here in her like solo uniform. I don't remember what that specifically is called, but it's from Incredibles 2. Last time we did one of these updates, Guardians of the Galaxy only had one elevator shaft running out of three and the line was 120 minute wait. Hopefully that's not the case today. We'll have to wait and see. Another pretty popular question I get is, when are they gonna put something back in the Hyperion Theater? And the answer is, I don't know. They haven't had anything in here for almost a year now. Rogers the Musical, it was last year from the end of June to the end of August. It's the last time the Hyperion had a show in it. And I do miss it. It was a good 45 minutes of air conditioning. Right now, they just have a couple of tables. It's like overflow for PIMS over here, and that's about it. Although I have seen them use that space for like events. Whenever they had the um, Anaheim Ducks Day, they had all the games and activities back in that area. The line does appear pretty long. If all three elevator shafts are running, it should be a 40 minute wait, just basing that off of uh, where the, the line is in the attraction there. Ooh, 60, it says 60. 
So that means either one shaft is broken or there's just a lot of lightning lanes coming through, which is making the standby a little longer. Possible either way. Outside of Pim Test Kitchen, I wonder if this is new or if I've just been unobservant. They've added some tables over here. There does seem to be fewer tables over in front of the Hyperion where they used to have a lot more. So maybe they added some more tables over here to compensate. Uh, nobody's sitting at them and that's usually a, a pretty, oh look, there's more tables over here too. Um, nobody's sitting in the sun is what it comes down to. So if you're willing to sit in the sun, you'll, uh, you'll be able to find a table. Spider-Man Web Slingers posted at a 35 minute wait. However, this area over here is completely full. I'd probably put it closer to 45 if I had to guess. Really hard to show it filming wise though. I can see barely over the wall and see tops of heads and things into the lightning lane queue. And the lightning lane queue actually didn't seem all that bad. So uh, it's possible that it is 35 just because there's not as many lightning laners coming through. That's always going to slow down the standby line. Uh, the longer the lightning lane, the, the more urgent they feel it is to push lightning laners through, which means they start to ignore the standby line a little bit. We've talked about that theory a couple of times here on the channel and how that works. And um, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of the split for lightning lane and standby. I just miss the old fast pass system. That's what it comes down to, folks. Um, you know, have you seen Inside Out 2? We just went and watched it recently. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel like every time I start getting on the lightning lane subject, it's like nostalgia comes out of the door. And I remember when it's not time yet. Get back for another 10 years. Oh, I'm sorry. If you haven't seen Inside Out 2, you don't know what I'm talking about. But that's my favorite part. I love when nostalgia comes out. It's such a minor part of the movie and has absolutely nothing to do with the plot. So, um, you know, I, I thought I'd be okay sharing it even though it's so new. Also, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. They only did it once, but I'm still happy none the same. Uh, that they put triple den gum in the movie. In the movie. Triple den gum. Because I love the triple den gum part from the first movie, and I was like, they better have triple den gum in Inside Out 2. And I, they did not disappoint. If you're enjoying this video and finding it helpful, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'm always happy to answer them. Triple den gum will make you smile. Triple den gum and something, something, something. I don't triple den gum. That's all I remember. Triple den gum. <laughs> I hear Mater over here singing that he's got a flat tire. Flat tire, grease, fire, something, something. It says it's a 10 minute wait, but the line is all the way out here. But it doesn't look like they, yeah, they don't really have, they don't really have the queue open, that's why. So 10 minutes, pretty accurate. 10 minutes is pretty good, to be honest with you. What, 12.40 in the afternoon now at this point, probably? 10 minutes is not bad. You know, I don't know why we say that phrase, to be honest with you because that like implies that we're not honest other times. But I always try to absolutely do my best to be completely honest with you all the time here on the channel. I don't sugarcoat things, I don't hold punches. If things are bad, I say they're bad. Uh, sometimes I get accused of being too negative here on the channel. I don't think I am. If I'm being negative, it's because I want Disney to improve or to be aware if they watch my videos that, uh, you know, they, they don't like something, that they, they drop the ball on something. Or I also want you not to buy something that honestly, like, is bad. So, I, you know, I. I, I'm negative if only it's called for. I actually love to be at Disneyland. I feel like I'm a very cheery, positive person for the most part. Disneyland is like my happy place. It's the happiest place on earth. Unless you're a toddler that woke up at six in the morning and it is two in the afternoon and hot, then it's not so happy. Posted wait time for Luigi's Rollick and Roasters was 30 minutes. And uh, looks like this is the back of the line. Uh, oh no, there's, hey, yeah, there's more people right there. So it is going into the into the building. Um, it's always so hard to say because most of the line is inside. But uh, we'll let you look at the, the ride for a minute. Just enjoy them, them going around. 30 minutes though, I mean, that's pretty average for this ride. I usually see it at 40, so it's a little below average, I guess. Radiator Springs Racer standby line is posted at a 65 minute wait, but um, we're gonna do what we always do and actually go into the single rider line and see how well that looks because uh, that's the way I think you ought to ride this ride anyway. The best I have ever seen the single rider line for this attraction was around 15 minutes. 
If I ever find the line like less than that when doing one of these crowd updates, I'd probably be tempted to actually just stay in line and finish it out. 15 minutes really isn't bad. I'd, I'd probably wait that anyway. But usually when I come up here to do a crowd update like this, I consider it a work visit, uh, a no play visit, if you will. I'll usually spend five, six hours here and I won't ride a single ride. I'll just be uh, filming stuff for you, be it a tips video, construction update, crowd update, uh, you name it. And uh, yeah, I don't usually ride rides on those types of visits. Uh, we have found the back of the single rider line. It is right where that uh, guy with the blue shirt is. It's the back of the single rider line. And yeah, I'd put that at about uh, 17, 18 minutes from that spot. So uh, not too bad. It, it really, it really is not bad. Uh, beats the 65 minute wait. You know, contrary to popular belief, having a YouTube channel actually requires a lot of work. I feel like a lot of people think that uh, if you're a YouTuber or uh, maybe it's different for TikTokers and Instagrammers, I've never really done that sort of thing. Uh, and, but I mean, I, I've dabbled in it, so I do know it, it does take work. I mean, first off, you have to plan the content. Planning is, it takes a lot of work. You also have to know how the algorithm works and how to utilize that to your advantage, which takes a lot of research and experimentation. And then, of course, you have to come here and you have to film the content that you know people are going to watch. And then uh, that usually takes a lot of planning as well. Planning and preparation to know exactly uh, what to put in a video. And then the, the, the work doesn't end there. You actually have to go home and you have to edit all that footage that you put together. Um, cut things that don't work, shorten it down, don't ramble, that sort of thing like I am right now. <laughs> and then the work doesn't end there. You've got to put descriptions together and, and tags and create thumbnails and all of this has to be engaging. The title and the thumbnail are the two most important things for a video to get people to watch. And so, uh, yeah, it, it requires a lot of work and it's not a simple process either. And what, what brought this up is there's a lot of people out there that seem to think that if my video drops today, again, I don't know what day this video is dropping, but if it drops today, I must have been there today. This video is probably coming a week out or more after I was here. It's, it's not coming out the same day. And that's just a very common misconception that if the video published on YouTube today, I must have been there today. No, videos videos do not get turned around that quickly. <laughs> they, they take a lot of work to put together. San Francisco Square here looking pretty busy. Once upon a time, it used to be easy to find a table here. Lately, not so much. Cucina Cucamonga has quite the standby line. Highly recommend you mobile order, folks. That way you don't have to wait in line. The best thing to do is go hop in line for a ride. And while you're waiting, you know, the 30 minutes for that attraction, you're looking through the mobile orders. You're browsing the menus. You're seeing where it is that you want to eat. While you're waiting in line, you're multitasking. You're not wasting time. What in the world happened to the water? Oh man, it's like teal. What? I've never seen that before. All right, distraction, distraction over. Uh, yeah, while you're standing in line, standby lines, you could be mobile ordering your food, figuring out where it is you want to go and what you want to eat. Time to head off on in to Pixar Pier. There goes the Incredicoaster. Hey, at least it's working today. That's a positive from some days. I feel like it's a risk every time you get in the line for the Incredicoaster now. If the ride breaks while you're on it, you could get stuck like up on the track or you know over there and you have to get rescued basically to get out and uh, sometimes in these this hot sun hot sunny days you could roast and bake if you get stuck out that way line looks pretty long but uh, there's not very many single riders and the standby lines not all the way up here so um, that's a good thing let's just say 35 minutes Posted at a 30 minute wait, so I was pretty close, pretty close. Jesse's Critter Carousel, as always, as always. It pretty much is never longer than that. I mean, <laughs> look, if you were to get in line right now, you'd be the only one because they're loading up uh, a crew right now. Carousels are good high capacity, low interest rides, which means that they're always gonna be pretty much walk-ons. So if you're just looking for something to do, you're tired of the long lines, go to a carousel. Hey. Toy Story Midway Mania. Oh, he's gonna sing. He's gonna sing. I like when uh, Mr. Potato Head sings. 
Okay, that's it. I can't stay there any longer or the copyright monster will attack me because of the music. I've had it happen with that song before. Anyhow, uh, 35 minutes wait. This does not look like a 35 minute wait to me. Not at all. Uh, unless that room, I mean, that room is probably full, but even so, it, it doesn't look that bad to me. This looks pretty good. I like it. That is really unusual, like really unusual for this time of day. Remember, it is Saturday, July 13th. Three levels of annual pass holders are blocked out today. Only my key, the Inspire key, is allowed in the park on Saturdays in July, as well as the final Saturday in June and the first Saturday in August. The bottom three passes are blocked out. So generally speaking, the wait times are a little bit better because of that. I was finding the wait times to be fairly average today though. Pixar Pal Around says it was 30 minutes for the swinging. Probably equally as long for the uh, non-swinging. There is only one non-swinging carriage and two swinging carriages. That makes the swinging line move twice as fast. So, um, you know, it is kind of hard. Half of my family doesn't like the swinging, half of my family does. Sometimes we try to time it so that we're both on the same cycle of ride-throughs, uh, but it, it is hard. And so, you know, sometimes it doesn't always, always work, but you do what you can with that attraction. Inside out emotional whirlwind at a 20 minute wait. And the line did look like it probably is the case. I wonder if they'll ever update this to include some inside out two characters. I mean, maybe the outside anyway, if they don't do the actual attraction. Or they'll just leave it alone. They still have all the main characters in the movie for the second one anyway. Silly Symphony Swings, five minute waits. That's another one that uh, is usually pretty high capacity, low interest attraction. And so it's a, it's a good one if you're looking for something quick to get onto with, without too much wait time. In fact, there are a lot of those old timey amusement park type rides here at DCA, which is probably why a lot of people don't really like Disney California Adventure, but there are plenty of rides here with such minimal waits that, uh, you know, if you're just tired of the long lines, come to DCA because you've got the swings, you've got the carousel, you've got maters, you've got a uh, golden zephyr, you've got um, jumping jellyfish. Yep. Look at the line for this attraction. Look at it. It's empty. Empty. <laughs> Meanwhile, across the way here, Goofy's Sky School, 35 minutes. Although that's also a classic old timey theme park ride as well. Just, you know, with a goofy theme. <laughs> Ah, there's actually quite a lot of space in the walkways. I think I made that comment today, that I felt like at least the walkways are fairly spacious compared to Disneyland. Disneyland felt fairly crowded. Golden Zephyr, <laughs> yep, five minute wait. Five minute wait for the Golden Zephyr. We're coming up on the back end of the Little Mermaid and I do see the complete queue as well as the extensions full. I still feel like I've never seen this ride above 25 minutes, even though they've added Lightning Lane. So I'm just going to say 25 minutes. The unfortunate downside is that since they have added the Lightning Lane, you never really see it below 25 minutes either. Once upon a time, it was like 15 most of the day, and 25 minutes was the worst it would ever get on the worst possible day of the worst week of the year, which is like middle of spring break. <laughs> and um, now it's 25 minutes all the time. Oh boy, they've got somebody out holding one of those line signs. That's not good. <laughs> Might be longer than 25. I don't think I've ever seen that. I don't think I've ever seen that with Little Mermaid. But they have needed somebody with a line forms here sign. Wait time, 15 minutes. Yeah, not likely. Even the 20 minutes on that digital sign seems unlikely. The Redwood Creek Challenge Trail should be reopening in a little less than two weeks from now. It's been a long closure. Not that that would have taken like a whole ton of people in there, but you know, oh look, more blue water. Not quite as blue. I don't know why this is shocking me. Not quite as blue. Uh, it's like gray almost. Why, there's like nobody on this. Okay, the, the ride must be broken. They must be testing it or something. 
because there is no way that there should be empty boats at 80 degrees on a Saturday. And yep, it is indeed closed at the moment. Although that guy just said something about 1.30. So I don't know if they're planning on opening it up at 1.30. It's about 1.12 at the moment. Uh, so maybe a couple of more minutes. The fun thing is they are over here playing cornhole. So maybe the uh, 1.30 thing was that they're doing this cornhole until 1.30. Maybe that's what, what it has to do. Uh, that's that's pretty fun. <laughs> and our final ride is going to be soaring around the world. The line does look pretty long out here. <sighs> I feel like the last time I saw it that long, it said 90. But I feel like 90 would be really, really high. So I'm going to go with 60. That's just, I don't know. Let, let's We're going to wait till we get around the corner and find out. The lightning lane, though, is really short. And I feel like the last time when I said it was 90, that this was like double, triple wrapped and all the way out by smoke jumpers grills. So the fact that the lightning lane isn't that bad, maybe it is only like 50. Oh, 40. Okay, okay. Definitely can handle a 40 minute wait. This, uh, this, yeah, this would definitely be 90 if like the lightning lane line was super long, but not too bad right now. I did have to do one final thing though, and that's uphold a promise to myself to get a pog punch every time I visit DCA. And here it is, my pog punch, passion orange guava juice. Love it. And that's it for our time here today at Disney California Adventure, giving you a crowd update for the month of July. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button on the way out. If you've got questions, drop them in the comments below. I am always happy to answer them. Click this video to check out the Disneyland crowd update. Thanks for watching and we will see you again next time.